Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Today I wanted to show you a more convenient version of the triplanar node in Redshift using OSL. My friend Darby wrote this one and I wanted to cover it since I've completely switched to using this version versus the built-in triplanar node in Redshift. As a quick summary, triplanar mapping is a technique similar to box or cubic mapping where you just apply a texture to something, roughly as if it was a cube. It projects the texture in three planes, so it's cool that it will blend or fade the seam between these axes. We can see in this demo scene I have a metal material applied to the entrance of this building, and with a cubic map, the texture has a visible seam right here along the bend. Taking a look at the first version of this redshift material, it's just a simple painted metal texture with the diffuse, roughness, metal, and normal maps. If we flip over to the redshift triplanar version of the material, we'll see some nice blending along the curve. Now, it's not perfect, but depending on the texture, in this case, I think it's better than the harsh transition line, at least. So using the built-in redshift triplanar node, we insert this in between each texture and then connect it into our material. This works okay, but it can be a bit cumbersome, since if you want to make a change to the triplanar node, say, adjusting the scale, then you have to select all of the nodes first in order to make that change. Also, I find the scale value a bit annoying, since it defaults at 0.01, which means you don't have much room to scale this number down, which actually is how you make the texture visibly larger. I don't think this scale value was made with Cinema 4D's units in mind. Alright, now we can use the triplanar coordinates OSL node that Darby made. Huge shout out and all the credit goes to him. To find his code, we can find his fork of the main Redshift OSL repository, and if you aren't comfortable navigating GitHub, then no worries, the link will be in the description. With the code pasted and compiled in our OSL node, we can see the parameters, and for the most part, it should feel familiar to the built-in triplanar node. There are some cool bonuses though, but let's connect it first. As we see it has a UV offset output, connect that to the texture offset of each of these nodes. With the triplanar version applied, starting up the render view, we can take a look. The first really nice quality of life feature is the uniform scale value. So if we adjust this up, we'll see the entire texture gets larger, all three axes get scaled at once. Perfect. You do have individual control over scale on each axis, as well as rotation and translation though. Of course though, since it is a triplanar node, you have control over the blending amount and blending curve. So if we adjust this up, we'll see this transition fade between the different axes gets larger, and adjusting the curve will control the strength of that transition. A higher number will be sharper, a lower number will be smoother. Another cool option is this toggle between world space projection and object space projection. You might be able to come up with a creative use for that. And last but not least, we have this noise section. So right now I can look through this edge weight output just to get an idea and visualize the transition point. So now if we adjust the noise weight and noise uniform scale and other parameters, we can get a sense of how this noise value will help break up the transition point between certain textures. This could be really useful depending on the set of textures you're using. There's also a noise random seed. This can be handy just in case you need to change it. So we can close things out with just one final comparison between the different types. Using the noise value is going to be subtle, but we can just get a sense that along some of the edges there's just a little bit extra to the blending, which I think helps smooth out and sell the effect really well. The impact of this, of course, will depend a lot on your particular set of textures, but for this example, I think I'm happy including some of the noise. So I think that's a good place to wrap things up for now. I hope that you enjoy getting to use this triplanar coordinates OSL node that Darby created. I know I have really liked using it so far, and if you found this quick tip useful, please like the video, and thank you so much for watching.